my grandparents, I always call them Gramps and Grams. Uh, everybody else knows them as Dar and Dot. They, uh, they were a, the perfect team together uh, with, a, with a strong faith and commitment to their church. Their, uh, th I think it's a strong Christian faith that ran through everything that they did. Mary Lou was this tiny little bundle of energy and if she believed in something, she would uh, work her fingers to the bone to get to that cause. They were totally a team. There was nothing, anything my uncle did that my aunt wasn't part of. Uh, my aunt, when they first began their travels in business, she would put Mary Lou in the car and they would go and do collections with my uncle and then go have ice cream. It's so weird calling them Dot or Dar or Mary Lou because it's just Bama Bampa or Mima. And that's really the type of people that they are. They, they're just like, they, they give themselves to others, you know, to the community and they help out. But that's just because that's what they do. To know that there's people out there like Dot and Dar Y camp uh, that are just doing things because it's the right thing to do, not for any kind of pat on the back. Uh, it just, it, it gives you hope. It's a great story because oftentimes when we think about a love story, we think about it as inward facing, the love between two people. But a real love story is one where two people love each other so much that it begins to be radiated outward. When I think of my grandfather, um, there was never an event or a gathering that we were involved in where there wasn't joy and laughter. He loved life and loved to, to uh, enjoy it. And uh, my grandmother to this day, if you ask her, uh, she'll say, isn't this a beautiful and wonderful life that God has given us and aren't we so lucky to be in it? So together they, they love life. The way he cared for the clients of the bank and the employees. If you were an employee of the bank, you were part of the family and that is how he treated you. And he made you feel very, very welcome. Dot was Dar's backbone and he relied on her opinion so heavily. They worked together so closely. They had an energy that was Unbelievable. It, it was hard to keep up with them. You know, I'm not sure that there is, um, there's a couple uh, in the South Bend community that my wife Carmen and I have loved, respected, admired more than Dar and Dot Wycamp and their family. Uh, they've meant so much to this community, but they've also meant so much to us personally. And I think there's a lot of people who feel the way we feel about them. When it came to sharing, they really did. And the, it was their community, too. And they wanted things to be nice, you know, and uh, progress. And uh, they were so generous in uh, showing this progress uh, because it's their town, and they, <laughs> they wanted to, to grow. I remember Jim was in uh, the band at Penn High School. And their, and their big cause or fundraiser at the time was port pit chicken. Mary Lou would go from desk to desk at the bank. How many tickets would you like? And you'd buy your tickets, and Dar would come right behind her and pay you back. <laughs> it was, it was, I'll never forget Porta Pit Chicken. <laughs> it's, it's very inspiring because you have, um, you have two individuals who not only gave of themselves, uh, you know, to organizations and, and institutions, uh, but also gave to individuals and helped individuals out that, uh, you know, you've, uh, they were very generous people. They're a great team, and you know, when you think of Dar Camp, you think of Dot, you think about the things that they did in the community. I think uh, they embraced the community, and uh, we are just indebted at Bethel College for their gift, and the Camp Athletic Center has been a jewel not just for Bethel College, but for Mishawaka and the surrounding area. Well, early on at the center, uh, Dar was a member of our Council of Advisors, and um, we had talked about uh, needing to expand, to offer more services, and quite frankly, more, more capacity uh, to meet the needs of family and ch families and children. 
And so um, Dar said, how much does that building next door cost uh, one day? And, and I told him the amount and he said, we'll take care of that. Just the generosity of spirit that flowed from them. Dar and Dot, they started as underdogs. I mean, they worked their way up from nothing. They will tell you that some of their happiest days were when they had virtually nothing. And they never lost the sense of being there for the underdog. And so that's how they really related to the homeless and, and to so many other constituencies in need, uh, nonprofits that benefited from their, their generosity. They felt like there were some special uh, opportunities that they wanted to be part of, and that was higher education. College is a struggle, believe me. <laughs> I'm almost done. Uh, receiving this scholarship uh, gave me the oomph, I guess, uh, to continue. And I know that other students that receive this scholarship, uh, when they're, they're down and out, just thinking, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. And you receive a scholarship like that and you think, man, there's somebody else out there that believes in me, that thinks I can do this. The law school and the finances that it caused, that it requires to attend law school, it's, it's a great burden and it weighs on you heavily throughout your career and it will weigh on anybody heavily throughout their career. And to be able to receive a scholarship through somebody else's good nature uh, and to be able to take advantage of that opportunity presents for you the ability to kind of do what you want with your career. To have the opportunity if you choose to, to help people throughout your entire legal career and not to just take the highest paying job but it allows you to kind of give back during the time that you have uh, to in your career. My mom, Mary Lou, was uh, was small physically, but she had a large presence. She had a uh, dedication to uh, the community and to the organization she loved. Well, back as far as I can remember, uh, I, I know that Junior League was something that she was very fond of, and, and uh, I, I remember several uh, events where I helped as a child to help support uh, her in her efforts and the whole family helped support her uh, in her efforts at Junior League, Junior League Holiday Ball. Well, the first thing that Mary Lou sucked me into when we, after we moved here, uh, was Children's Carnival for the Arts. It was a circus theme and so she decided that a circus theme needed an elephant. So she told Dara, I'm an elephant for Children's Carnival and the next thing you know, there was an elephant in the Citrus Center parking lot. Mary Lou was the ultimate fundraiser, and her zest for uh, fundraising was because she felt she should. She felt that she was able to do that with her relationships in the banking world and in the community. When she called, people answered. Mary Lou believed that whatever you are given in life, you should give back. You, you treat everybody the same. You treat everybody with respect and as, as an equal, and you give to people who are less fortunate than you. They wouldn't really talk about what they've done in the community. They would just be, it was just our family, you know? It's not, well, I did this today or I did that today. It's, it's the family there, and they just did it because it was the right thing to do. They felt fortunate for what they were able to have and in turn they wanted to give back. And that, I think, is what you see with my aunt and uncle, and my aunt to this day. Uh, she is always uh, sharing with people uh, the wonderful life that she has had and the opportunities that she has had. And that is why she believes so much in the fact that other people can have those. I've been on the Memorial Gifts Committee with Dot for years. This is where money is usually given at Easter time in memory of different people. And uh, Dot has been chairman of that com commission for a long, long time and deciding where it should be spent. And at this age, Dot is still chairman of the commission. <laughs> and so she's wonderful to work with. I met Dot at a scholarship recognition ceremony uh, this past fall at IUSB. And I didn't get to speak to her too much, but I did speak to her a little bit. I was able to shake her hand and say thank you. And that woman is just a little spitfire. She's fabulous. 
Obama is really one special person to me and we really appreciate you to be in our family and we truly love you so much. Now the, the team is, uh, is down to just Dot now, but she's not alone. The inspiration that she's given all of us through that team effort that they, they put together uh, will carry on and we'll be there with her.